Hey guys, we're picking back up in um, Exodus chapter 2, and I just want to look at uh, verses 3 through 6. This is one of the most famous stories in all the Old Testament, Moses in the basket in the Nile. Uh, but the mom and dad didn't really have a lot of choice. Um, Amram, uh, Aram, and Jacobet, as we know their names are. This is verse 3. But when she could no longer hide him, speaking of Moses, she got a basket of papyrus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance watching to see what would happen to him. Soon, Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river. And her attendants walked along the bank, the river bank. When the, priest, when the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying and she felt sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. So in a real literal sense, Moses' parents did exactly what Pharaoh said. They put, they, they put their baby in the river, but they just made sure he would float, right? So this is God's sovereignty happening right here. I 100% believe that God guided the family to do this at the time frame when the princess, Pharaoh's daughter, would come into the picture and would find him. There's simply, there's big moments in history, guys, where God intervenes. And this is one we see in Scripture. We see them in, in our world as well, right? We, we see them. In, in studying history over the years, especially reading about the American Revolution specifically, there, there were simply moments when it was very obvious God's sovereignty stepped in and he was in control. And this is one of those moments. Now, here, God's beautifully planned for this deliverance. But Pharaoh's daughter is conditioned by the culture to reject this child. So it shows a softness in her heart and in who she is that she looked at this child in a different way to the point that even though the culture would have looked down on this greatly, she took the child in. And who's going to argue with Pharaoh's daughter, right? You're going to argue with her? Pharaoh will have your head sitting on a platter by morning. It's not a problem. And so as long as Pharaoh you know, gave in to her and let her have what she wanted, it would be this child. And so God positioned all of this in perfect, just perfect ways. Everything flowed together because not only was he preserving the life of this child, he understood who Moses would grow to be and the plan that God had for his life here on this earth. And this, my friends, is step number one to the day when the Red Sea parts. And we'll eventually part that Red Sea, but that'll be another time. You guys be good.